Oh, man. Yeah. We're back in the Tracy Boards recording studio for another friendly battle that took place. And this time we've got two guests. You'll recognize Ron Langell. He's been, uh, he did the interview with us, the podcast style Crokinole Conversations. And then if you've watched any amount of Crokinole Center footage, you'll recognize the, the gentleman in the red shirt there. That is the Jason Beerling. Because we had three flickers, we are playing a bit of a unique style tonight, and we call this 2v1. So there is one player playing by himself who has 12 buttons, and the two opponents each have six buttons. So the way that works is the person playing by themselves takes every other shot. They, uh, they, shoot, they shoot on behalf of their partner that empty chair across from them. They do not run back and forth. They just stay put. And in this first match, we have Jeremy Tracy playing against Ron Langell and Jason Beerling. And what uh, what happens after this? We played for quite a while, but what we did was we took. Uh, oh, there's Jeremy making a horrific shot, dropping uh, 20 for his opponents. But we we took turns. There's one match with each of us being the one playing against the two. But back to the action here. Jeremy does manage to tie up the 20 count, but he's on the wrong side of this 20s race, given that uh, Langell and Beerling have the have the hammer. Wow! Another not great shot by Jeremy. This is particularly bad when you're playing 2v1 because uh, it's on the far side of the board, really hard to control there. Jason decided to to roll that in a little bit, and I, I think there was a bit of a theme where he. Uh, he likes the highlight shots. You'll see some fantastic shots at him during this match, I'm sure. Oops. Here, Ron say oops after he made that shot because he also brought it back within like within reach for Jeremy to be able to do exactly that. So now, back in control with the 120 advantage and maybe about to make that 220s. Yes, he did. Did not get the off, but that may not be the may not be the worst thing. Ron is finding his range on those open 20s. Now, looks like Jeremy is dropping to the side, electing to touch this from the outside. And <laughs> that's uh, two terrible shots in this round. I think the, the reason for the decision was because coming in, uh, touching it from the inside, that would have been, that would have been, uh, it's posted. It's uptight against that post. So that is the option he's going to go with this time is to try to touch it from the inside, which he does successfully, but unfortunately did not get the off. Getting down to the last couple of shots to decide this round, that's always the way I prefer to see a round of Crokinole, whether I'm watching it or playing in it. Uh, tight rounds are just uh, more fun. They force you to be, they force the players to be sharper when uh, the last few shots are inconsequential. And right now he's sitting debating some strategy, what's best to go with here. Jason's gonna have that Okay, yeah, Jason having the last shot, Jeremy was trying to make sure that he didn't just have a hit and stick in order to have 25 points on the board to overtake that 20 advantage that he had. Because he left Jason with a tough shot, uh, that angle in, and he rolled right out the other side, they ended up with 20 on the board, so that first round is tied 1-1. Yeah, like I say, when a, when a round comes down to those last couple of shots, it just forces more more concentration, more diligence, and a little more consideration for strategy. And that's always uh, that's always more fun. That's nicely posted, but let's see if Jason likes to go. Oh, he absolutely went for it and was super close to dropping that uh, bounce back 20. Jeremy again getting the 20 and not the off, although that may not be the worst thing because he has hammer in this round. Mm -hmm. Not a lot. Once, uh, yeah. Oh, fantastic follow through there, and just just a little bit offline. There's the possibility that Jeremy's got a double here, but it's not super well lined up. We'll see what see what he decides to go with. Oh, <laughs> he got a single takeout of the wrong color. Yeah, the only good thing about this is that, okay, what Jason's going to need to go for here is that uh, bump and run, which he was unsuccessful with. Bump and run is a really fun shot, and uh, some players will have a higher success rate with that than even even um, 
open 20s, but when they're that far out to, to do a bump and run from way out in the five is a super challenging shot. Looks like Jeremy's lining up to try to pad the... He was going for the 20, but the, the peg, cost him, peg cost him that 20. See if Ron can... Uh, I think he's probably going to try to use his own as a bit of a backboard, anyway, but it was one. just overhanging a little too much. Now, Jeremy is up in the 20s, but he's he's digging quite a hole. He's going to need to find a way to start getting some doubles because, yeah, he's just getting so far behind on the board that it's going to be tough. It's going to be in tough, even though he does have the hammer. And again, given this is a little more of a, a, a social get-together, there's a little bit of chitter-chatter between the players. Jeremy talks too damn much. I think that's part of the problem. He is... He is successful in that one double takeout. He leaves Jason an angle in, but with so much of that dark button overhanging the 20 hole, it's not a great opportunity. We'll see. We'll see what Jason's able to do with it. He got the angle perfect. Uh, yeah, he's fantastic at his angle ends. But like I say, with that dark one covering so much of the covering so much of the center hole. Jeremy drains another 20, but I think I think he left yet another one on, so he's up two 20s. Say Ron getting uh, finding his groove. Jeremy's got a couple here in the 15 he could go for, and I think the reason he's opting on this side is because it is Jason who's going to shoot next. So if he's on that side, rather than uh, if he had taken it the one on that was closer to Jason, Jason may have had a better opportunity to, to create a 20 out of it. He still has the option here to go off a peg, which I'm yeah. guessing is what he's going for. Oh, yep, nice. the pegs are so nice he hit him twice. Uh, two pegs and back okay. into the center Speaking hole. So uh, I still think that it was the best strategy for Jeremy to try to stay on that side of the board, but uh, Jason still made him pay. <laughs> now we'll see what uh, see what Ron can generate out of this looks like he's just yeah he's just I going for that takeout keeping it in the house and in hopes of in hopes of setting up uh, future opportunities now again uh, I feel like uh, it was a good idea to drop to that side because Jason was shooting next um, it's so often the strategy, the defensive strategy in doubles is to try to make sure the person shooting after you doesn't have too much to work with. I think Jason was feeling um, feeling the law of reciprocity there. The first round, Jeremy gave him a 20, gave them a 20, so he uh, he just decided to return that favor. See, maybe Mackenzie, rather than put together a highlight reel, will put together a low light reel. That's that's twice already you've seen players drop 20s for their opponents. Jeremy finally able to get that one taken out on the far side of the board because sometimes that one sitting out in the five can make the difference at the end of a round, that, that five point difference. It, it doesn't seem like that big a deal when it stays on at the time, but it can be a really big deal later in the round. Jeremy able to successfully win that round and uh, gives him a three to one lead as the players collect up their buttons, getting ready to go again. Jeremy starting this round, this is the third round, so he is shooting on behalf of his imaginary friend. That's why you'll see Jason shoot next. So this uh, 2v1 does require a little bit of concentration. If there's gonna be a mix up in the order, that is so often where it happens. Jeremy pulling the super steed, blowing it all the way through the house. Ron makes him pay the price. Draining that 20. Coming in a little bit pacey there, as our friend Simon Dowerk would say. But it manages to get the 20. Players finding their groove at this point. The ever boring to watch, but uh, exciting to be in 20s race. Not as exciting for Jeremy because he's on the wrong side of the 20s race and it's about to get a lot worse. He is down two 20s at this point against the hammer. Got a lot of work to come back in this round. Let's see. And his opponent's not not leaving him much of an opportunity. It is really tough to get back in the, in the round when your opponent just Ooh. won't miss. There's Jason giving him just a glimmer of hope. Just a glimmer of hope. <laughs> that's what he did with his glimmer of hope. Blows it right through the house. Ron, after seeing two players shoot too hard, you know, sometimes that gets in your head a little bit. So him trying to, you know, maybe worried about doing the same thing, came up short, but at least made a, a valid shot. 
this is not a good situation for Jeremy because it's it's outside. There you go. He he peels everything to force play back to the middle. His only shot of winning, and then of course Ron is is up to the task of that open twenty. But uh, still the right decision strategically to peel everything off because if that play had stayed outside of the house, absolutely no chance of getting back in the round. This was what he was looking to see happen. Oh, that was his chance to at least draw back to even. It probably wouldn't have mattered. Ron just would have needed to make a valid shot in order to um, in order to win that round. Yeah, Jeremy was able to fight back and make it a little bit interesting, but not exactly a nail biter as that uh, third round came to a close. And now these players are sitting at a 3-3 tie. Some good shots, some bad shots. And here we sit 3-3. So Jason in the final round, he opens things up. Jeremy, the first to miss. Didn't learn his lesson in the uh, in the last round of falling behind in that 20s race. There, he's finding his range. There is... Um, Jason playing a little bit of uh, str strategy there. He didn't knock the green off. And uh, if Jeremy had allowed that to continue, then the, the players just would have, the uh, Ron and, and Jason just would have taken turns and played ping pong over there. And what Jeremy did instead was go, okay, I'm not, I'm not doing that. And he peeled his own button off in order to force play back to the middle. He was very fortunate that uh, Ron did miss the open 20. He was able to pour the peel the other button off as well. Um, that could have gone. That could have gone much differently if Ron and Jason both had been draining their twenties. But definitely the right strategy play, in in my opinion. Um, yeah. To uh, even though it's a little bit counterintuitive to knock your own off in that case. Uh, obviously, it was me that was doing the shooting, so I agree with my strategy selection. But um, that's the reasoning why. And in this particular case, it worked out. Say it worked out, but still on the wrong side of the 20s race here. At least having the hammer gives a bit of hope of being able to level this 20 count before the round is done. That's a that's a tough leave because Jeremy is not going to be able to get the takeout. He did get that bounce back 20. That was uh, those are super satisfying. It isn't just a bounce back, a extra an extra little kick there from the opponent's button. Those are those are pretty satisfying. There's Jason dropping another 20. Now Jeremy does have a good opportunity to get the off and the 20 here. Gets the 20, not the off. That is pretty significant. That's probably, that is going to cost him the round right there because this is darn near impossible. Not impossible, nothing's impossible, but stepping back, weighing out the options. Definitely don't think the option is there to go off the opponent's button and straight into the center hole without something fancy. So tried to come into that gap and maybe catch a peg. Um, but yeah, when you look back at that drift 20 that Jeremy went for and did not get the off, that was uh, that made the difference between him having a chance to at least tie that round and uh, versus what actually did end up happening, him losing it. So what we had Mackenzie do with the editing here was just pull uh, two or three highlight shots out of the round to show show them in reverse. It's kind of fun to, and there's that shot I was talking about that cost him, absolutely cost, not getting the off made all the difference right there. If I go hang out with a buddy or something or get, have a get together. So now, beer, like I say, we change seats. We give Mr. Langell the opportunity to play, be the one in this 2v1 battle. So it is Langell shooting the green buttons, Tracy and Beerling shooting the dark buttons. Opening up with a couple of 20s. At this point, we'll see if the players are warmed up. And maybe you, uh, maybe there won't be anybody dropping 20s for their opponents in this match. And with each, each of these matches, what we did was we played the traditional NCA style. So played four rounds. It could end up in a tie. But yeah, just uh, we didn't do races to nine or anything like that. That's just that's just how we chose to play. It was just three guys hanging out, um, telling stories, flicking discs. Rom with a fantastic bounce back 20 there. Really great shot. 
time. And then, yeah, if really you watch that interview, nice. that uh, podcast style uh, crokinole yeah. conversation I did with Ron, he tells the story of walking into the Waterloo Club and, and seeing John Conrad, a multiple time world champion, and, and being, I don't think he was scared, but he was like a little bit intimidated or overwhelmed, and he almost walked out. And, and you'll see what happened. I mean, Ron stuck around, uh, played at clubs with high level players, and he can hang, he can hold his own. He. Uh, I believe when the NCA came to uh, a pause, he was sitting in 11th place in the NCA standings, had worked his way up from the rec division into the competitive division, and yeah, great player and great guy. He's uh, someone who I'll often reach out to if I'm going to travel and go to a club because he's always game, and that's how, he, uh, that's how he's continued to keep getting better. And uh, like I say, he's playing against Jason Beerling and Jeremy Tracy here, and he is up 420s to 2 in this Jeremy going for a nice assist there he knocked that green one up the good assist and at the same time uh, it absolutely leaves the door open for Ron to mess up that assist and that's exactly what he did we have been playing normal doubles that assist play would have been great because it would have been the player who uh, Ron's imaginary friend sitting in that uh, sitting in that empty chair would have been making the shot he wouldn't have had the opportunity to mess up that assist like Ron just did but um, so yeah not only is Ron up in the 20 count he is also whooping us on the board oh Jeremy going for a super aggressive play trying to hit the opponent's button off the peg and come back for a 20 uh, pretty good line but not not quite right so Jason is absolutely fantastic at his angles we'll see what he's able to do I'm guessing that's what he's lining up for here. Yeah, I can't do anything with that. I might be able to do a follow through here. Oh, oh it was good. a great try. A little bit offline, a little bit off weight, and uh, unfortunately, the downside of going for it sometimes, you, if you almost get it but not quite, you set your opponent up. Uh, this one, this round definitely does not come back down to the last couple of shots to settle it. Uh, Ron, I think at that point, was just showing off, trying to drain one more 20, even though he didn't need it. Speaking of draining 20s that he doesn't need, Jason with another another highlight shot. And, uh, yeah. Some of, these, some of these rounds, it's a little bit easier for me to do the commentary on as if I don't know what happened because it has been a little while since this was recorded. So I, I, don't, I don't even remember who won this. So I get to be as, just as surprised as you are. Jeremy opening up this round with a 20, putting a little bit of pressure on Ron. Ah, oh, Ron folds under pressure. Goes a little bit long, but at least it's a valid shot. Nice. Fantastic shot from Jason, getting the off, getting getting his button outside of the house. So probably what we're going to see Ron do here is peel. No. Interesting. Okay, I was expecting him to peel and force play back to the middle. Jeremy taking a little extra time here to decide what he wants to do. Yep, just a, a bump. He definitely, no, even though he couldn't get the I off with that angle that he took, he so didn't bad, want to. He wanted to make sure that the dark button didn't roll into the house, creating any opportunity for Ron to be set up for a 20. <laughs> Jeremy slowly dragging that button off the board, almost mocking Ron that uh, it was an invalid shot. Friendly mocking, but now we'll see if Ron goes for the double peel. Gets one off. Jason and Jeremy very much in control in this round because they're up a 20 and they have two buttons on. So, oh, they did have two buttons on. Ron gets the double, but he's still, still not in a great spot here because he's definitely not going to generate any 20s from out here. There he goes. Now he peels it. There are times when I see players when they don't peel, I don't know if they've got, uh, I don't know what their strategy is, I don't know if that's what they're thinking, or uh, what happens sometimes, honestly, is is a player will lose track of who's got the hammer, because uh, whether you have hammer or not absolutely impacts uh, what strategy what strategy you're going to employ. Nice. Jason draining a 20, going up two 20s to zero. Oh, Jeremy, a little heavy, a little heavy on that shot, so it bounced out, and 
let's see what Ron's able to create here. Bit of a tough shot here in that the uh, just the positioning with the peg that he didn't want to he wanted to make sure his opponent's button didn't go into that peg but uh, he was successful in that even bounced back a little bit Ron definitely wanted to keep things in and around that center hole and uh, yeah and this is exactly why in hopes that an opportunity would set itself up that was uh, definitely not a gimme I always say those heavy hangers can be tough let's see what Jeremy's able to do with this one he is able to drain that just a slight bit of a follow through and oh yeah Ron just a little off although probably doesn't much matter at this point Jason showing off his follow through skills and that brings that round to a close and brings this match to a two to two tie so this point this would be when it starts with Ron's imaginary friend he's shooting on behalf of the empty chair so he'll shoot first and Jason Beerling will have second shot and then it'll just uh, it'll just continue from there probably the biggest thing to watch for when you're doing uh, 2v1 play is this the start of this round right here Ron opens with a the weight and the line perfect on his open 20 Jason a little long probably a pretty good setup there we'll see if Ron just goes for the takeout or if he's gonna want to build on his on his lead in the 20 cup looks like he's lining up for the 20 drains it 20 and the off he's in great shape he's out two nothing in the 20s and uh, yeah Jeremy succumbed to the pressure a little long a little heavy on that open 20 attempt not long but a little heavy on it and it uh, hit back the nice thing is it's yeah. not a great position for Ron it's uh although he does he does extremely well with this shot we'll see how it goes ah yeah we'd really have to slow motion that one down to see what exactly happened there but didn't get the 20 he was after and Jason's looking at it he's trying to figure out if it he doesn't want to take his own out on the far side but it looks like he might yeah he did choose to sacrifice it in hopes of getting a 20 because at this point uh, definitely need a 20 to get back into this Super awesome. Ron setting up an opportunity probably for a touch 20 I suspect if he goes for a, a to get the oh assist. So, yeah yeah he's claiming that was an assist like he was doing that intentionally the nice thing about this is Ron doesn't really have much opportunity to disrupt that and Jason should that might have been the best thing for Ron to do he wasn't able to disrupt it but he was able to put his shooter in the way now Jason's gonna try to to make lemonades out of this lemon go for uh, get the off which is extremely smart because uh, otherwise it, it could leave Jeremy having to shoot all the way across the board on that side now Ron is left with another interesting situation because he's gonna want to go for a 20 and he doesn't want to sacrifice his own let's see if he's able to come up the off side here definitely a tough shot so he's going for the one at the follow-through and he also wanted to not sacrifice his own so he's left with two on which is great Jeremy getting aggressive, trying to go for a drift 20 there, ends up setting Ron up for yet another 20. Puts Ron ahead 3 nothing, well in command of this round. Jason's going to go through his own, probably the best option there. I think he was going for a follow through, still being a valid shot, hitting the green in the process, but uh, sets Ron up for yet another 20, which he drains. He's schooling. He's schooling his opponents drastically here. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna put it off this peg, and that's gonna yeah. Yeah. Hey, this is gonna that peg and back. Jeremy's getting a little brazen with his prediction here. The other one almost said he was going to push his dark button into a peg and back into the center. He was unsuccessful in that, but it's getting to the point in the round. It is, yeah, at this point is completely mathematically impossible. I, I never it, I never give up on a round until it is completely mathematically impossible. One, huh? So when uh, when we were down 420s but still had four shots left, as far as I have a concern, there's a chance. But, uh, yeah, once you're down 520s with only four shots left, your, <laughs> your probability of success is pretty darn low. So at this point, Jeremy's just going to practice his assist skills, and that was a terrible attempt at the assist. But um, 
see if Jason, Jason going for a double takeout. At this point, you're almost, you almost look at it as, okay, here's an opportunity to practice some shots. So Jeremy shooting for pride at this point. He's going to, oh, not shooting for pride, shooting to show off. Ah, <laughs> he successfully gets the off and also drops the 20 in the middle. Made zero difference on the scoreboard as Ron Langell goes up 4-2. to two. And now Jason Beerling to start the fourth and final round of this match, and which gives Ron the hammer, obviously. So Ron's in a good position to uh, come away from this with a victory. Jason and Ron both draining their open 20s. Players finding their groove now. That's four straight 20s. Pressure builds for the players while the entertainment value drops for the viewers. <laughs> all right, now we get to play Groganol. Jeremy's the first to miss, lips out a little bit. We'll see if Ron can make him pay, and he does. Does not get the off, but he gets the 20, so that puts him up four to three in the 20s. And it's setting up because if nice. Jason drains this, then Ron does a hit and stick, then Jeremy's gonna shoot all the way across the board. And uh, the nice thing is that and Jeremy's able to hit and stick. Now Ron's in a little different situation because if he just does a hit and stick again, then he leaves Jason the opportunity to angle in. So Ron's going to want to... That was pretty good. Ron was probably trying to get those more dead center to, to make it really tough for Jason to find an angle in. Let's see if he can take advantage of this opportunity that's set up in front of him here. So close. So very close. Just missed that. Uh, got the off, which is nice, but just missed the dropping the 20. Ooh, Ron going for the old circus 20 there, and he darn near got it. Two pegs and back into the center hole. Uh, setting Jeremy up nicely, hopefully for a takeout. Yep, for a takeout. Oh, as commentator, I'm probably not supposed to be rooting for, for one team. I apologize. But <laughs> yeah, they're even in the 20 count, and uh, yeah, coming down. Each team with four shots. Oh, that is a tough miss. If Ron is able to make him pay, then they are going to be in deep on this. He does make him pay up 6-5 in the 20s. Oh, that is terrible. Jeremy pulls the Super Steve. Ron comes up a little short. Again, they are not out of this mathematically. They still have a chance. Nice. Jason taking cleaning up that heavy hanger. Ron putting the pressure on. Goes up 7-6. to six. Jeremy evens. The 20 count, and all Ron needed to do to win this match, win this round, and therefore win this match, was to make a valid shot. So it was a few shots ago, but Jeremy going long on that open 20 was was kind of the nail in the coffin that late in the round to make that that much of a mistake. So yeah, you're seeing Ron here going for a follow through, but also catching a peg in the process. So, and then another highlight from Ron as he gets a, a powerful takeout 20. Sneaking past his own button. I think that's probably what's most impressive with that is it was it was tight quarters oh, nice and uh, Jeremy Able to take in a take a drop an angle in 20 from way out in the five It's always super satisfying those angle shots are, are tough From no matter where the opponent's button is but the further out they get the more the more challenging the more challenging it becomes So running upstairs. I was actually now this is the third and final match between these three combatants or yeah they say we we played for an evening so not definitely not the final match but what we decided to put up with scoreboard and commentary was one match with each player on their own so this is Jason Beerling versus Ron Langell and Jeremy Tracy Jeremy's the first to miss getting a little tired of saying that as the commentator but um, see if Jason is able to take advantage of this probably going for a follow-through he was I think going for a follow-through 20 came up a little light Ron's going to have the opportunity to draw even in the 20 count. He misses, but he's in a good position because Jason might get a touch 20. Now, let's see if Jeremy's able to capitalize on that because even if he doesn't get the takeout, even if he can get, I think he will go for the takeout, but even if he can just drop the 20, it's going to have them. Oh, that was unideal. Because it's leaving, I mean, that's basically a gimme. There's just a tiny little hanger. Jason cleans that up easily. And now uh, Ron and Jeremy are down two 20s. They have hammer. 
which is always a bonus, but still in pretty deep at this point. Very aggressive on Ron's part. Respect that. that. Set Jason up. I'm not sure if Jason, it looks like he's going to drop to the side and go for another 20. I wondered if he might, wondered if he might come at that the other way and go for a double, but he opted for going for the 20. And Jeremy has an opportunity to get his team on the board in the 20 count by going after this heavy hanger, which he drains. Nicely done. Jason is now set up for, this is a pretty, a pretty shooter friendly position for that. He had the angle right. He just uh, maybe hit the hit the button a little too sharp, a little too hard, a little too much of it, or not hard enough, one or the other. They've drawn back even in the 20 count, but uh, Jason still has one on, and now he's up again in the 20 count. Suspect Jeremy was trying to catch a peg on that one and bounce back, but he missed, and uh, yeah, it brings... This is really good for Jason because it's got play outside. I think Ron's going to go for something fun here. He's going to go through his own. Needs to make contact with the green, but he's going to try to angle in at the same time. Oh, darn good try. So close. That was uh, that was very close to being a highlight shot. Jason getting a little aggressive, a little greedy, going after another 20. Got a little too aggressive off that peg. Opened the door for Jeremy to draw the 20 count back to even at three 20s each. That could be a costly miss right there as Jason went a little bit long. See, they followed the spinning disc rule there with that green one and they let it, uh, they waited and let it settle on its own. Now Jason's back on track, draining that open 20. Pressure's on coming down the last bit here. Jeremy comes up short on that 20. So not only does he not drain the 20, but he sets up Jason for uh, definitely not a gimme at this angle, but absolutely an opportunity to put a put the nail in the coffin which he does bit of a follow-through drains that 20 so yeah making that last shot irrelevant as Ron missed but it really really didn't matter at that point Jason is up two to zero players taking advantage of the round board being a little foolish shooting shooting buttons around the gutter at one another and now the second round it'll be Jeremy Tracy to start Opens up with an open 20. Jason shooting for his imaginary friend. Comes up long, leaving an opportunity for Ron. Nice. Who drains it, gets the off and the 20. They're up two 20s to zero. Jason goes long again. It's uh, it's one of the most important skills in Crokinole is figuring out how to get your 20s back when you lose that. So. After you've missed a couple, it can be a little bit tough to get back on track. I think Jeremy with the shot there, definitely not going for a 20. I think he was trying to get the off and get away, which he was unsuccessful in. He was left it just just a little too close to the center hole for a, for an opponent as skilled as Jason Beerling. Jason makes him pay for that mistake by draining that 20. And now he's back. He's 100% back in this round because... He's down a 20, but he also has the hammer, almost draining the 20 there. He's got a big screen in his mind. Oh! Jeremy way off on the angle on that one. Didn't even keep his shooter on. Opened up the door. Jason now draws even in the 20 count. Ron missing. Players have fallen apart here. <laughs> great shot by Jason. And not, not a great position. I'm not sure. Yeah, Jeremy going for it anyway, even though it wasn't the angle wasn't really there for him. Jason again makes some pay. Going ahead three to two. Ron draws it even, but Jason has the hammer in this round. Goes long, leaving a bit of uh see if Jeremy learned his lesson from last time. Now he's gonna take a different angle. Oh. Oh. Going after that drift twenty, just a little off on that angle. Again setting Jason up. Looks like Jason's going to opt to drop right up the line. I always think it's wise for the for the players to at least consider. If you get two options to come in, you saw Jason lined up at one angle and then went, mm, and he dropped over, consider it the second option, and that was the one he opted for. Always a good idea to consider all those options. I know. 
Jason gets the off, and he's actually left it in a, a pretty good position. Ron's down to his last shot. If he drains a 20, it would just mean it would just mean he forced Jason to shoot a valid shot in order to this shot here. It doesn't matter if Jason hits it or not because uh, he is up in the 20 count. So he is up four to zero. So this is that uh, that third round where I always say the players need to be careful to get the to get the rotation started off right. So Jason is shooting for his imaginary friend at this point, which means Ron shoots second. So Ron's on top of it. He's on top of knowing when he should shoot. <laughs> he was not on top of the weight for that open twenty. Jason on fire at this point, making him pay, going up two twenties to zero. Trying to show the kids. Jeremy trying kids. to make a respectable mm. showing drops and that open 20. Mm. Jason this comes up just a tiny bit mm. light, mm. leaving a Ron run. a very heavy hanger. We'll see which angle Ron decides to take this at. Different players prefer different angles. And yeah, I, I think that probably was his best option. And he just uh, a little off. And Jeremy's going to be looking to catch a peg, I expect. Probably the one the caught the peg he uh, wanted, but not at the angle the or the weight bear. that he wanted. So Jason gets that really off and like moves over to a position that mm, it's going to force but, uh, Ron to either just hit and stick and wait for something better or, oh, nice. oh, or go for a, a lower percentage shot. Now this is leaving Jason in it. It's a little bit interesting, but it's not going to be that tough. He could just go through his own, but... Oh, and uh, yeah, he almost drained a 20 out of that. See Jeremy's eyes getting big here. He's going to be... Yeah, we'll see what he decides to use as... So if you beat me... Oh. You know you it. Yeah. The other rule is... That was... Uh, that, was a, that was a poor shot. That was a poor attempt at the 20. And setting Jason up yet again... Jason should be sending Jeremy a thank you note after this for all his generosity with the setups around the around the center hole. I really enjoyed it. It was a good movie. At this point, Beerling is up two twenties. He's up three to one in the twenty count. Ron getting aggressive there. Nice action on the follow through, just a little off his line. And again, Jason is set up most likely for yet another. Oh. He went after the twenty. Sorry, he went after the double takeout rather than going after the twenty. And uh, the results are actually fine because there's no there's no great opportunity here. Jeremy trying to use a peg to set. To, I think he was going for an assist. Just uh, anything to get a green in handy that center hole to help set his partner up. Wow. Wow. I'd like to see that one again. Jason accomplished a double takeout there by ricocheting through the house. I know it's a good idea to touch this. Yeah. I don't know. Let's see what Ron can make happen here. He's got a interesting angle to try to come in. Oh, so close. They were talking about him using the other green button as a, as a second backboard. I don't really feel like Jeremy's got much here other than just to plow forward. Shifted a little. As I yeah, remember. he tried to go through. That, that was a big follow through at that point. And they are really in deep. They're running out of shots. Green has three on. And yeah. So Jeremy and Ron need to get all the green off the board and drain a 20. So possible, oh, not very likely. Jason just decided to rub a little salt in the wounds there and do a bit, bounce off a peg for a 20. Jeremy tried to follow suit and was not successful in that. This point. Mr. Beerling is up six points yep, to zero. Just want to go on record as saying, my friend Simon Dowerk says, "Oh yeah, Jeremy only does commentary, puts the matches up where he wins." But I'm pretty sure there's a couple losses on my record here tonight, and uh, yeah, I don't I don't remember the final scores over the entire evening. I know Jason shot extremely well. No no ring rust for him to knock off based on what I saw in our evening of flicking. And I also know that we had a lot of fun. It just uh, it felt good to sit down with some top caliber players and, and flick discs. And sometimes when there's this much chatter going on, maybe the maybe the quality of play is missing a couple of percentage points. But you know it's a a fair trade off. So hopefully this has still been entertaining. 
as uh, we tune back in here. Ron and Jeremy getting a little more respectable showing here. They're up in the 20 count, 3-2. to two. Although Jason may turn this around right here with an opportunity to even that. There was an opportunity to even that. See what Jeremy's lining up for here because that's a, that's a tough angle. We'll see if he's going to try to get the off and roll out. That's exactly what he went for. Quite an aggressive play really because even just a little too much mustard on that and he would have lost his shooter all the way off opening up an open 20 opportunity. So Jason peeled it off, forcing play back to the middle. And here we've got Ron. He came up a little short on the open 20. Jason getting aggressive, going for the follow through 20. And why wouldn't he? I mean, he's he's been uh, he's been on fire. And there, Jeremy goes up. Uh, Jeremy puts him and Ron up four to two in the 20 count. Jason back on track with his 20s. Oh, that might do it. I always say that one of the skills that that so that uh, top level players need to have is is knowing how to adjust their strategy based on so many things. And one of those things is, is how are you shooting on that day? And uh, like say, Jason going after a very aggressive follow through 20, but it's it's at a time when he is shooting extremely well, a high success rate on his shot. So it makes perfect sense to go like that. But yeah, there are times he may have played that different if he wasn't finding. Nice. Wow. Me talking through Ron's highlight follow through 20 there. Um, yeah, there are times he may have chosen to play that uh, differently, a little more defensively, if if things weren't, if he just didn't feel like things were dropping for him. That follow through twenty that Ron Ron just got was huge because it uh, got them back in this match. They salvaged a little bit of a little bit of pride <laughs> by at least splitting, drawing even on that last round with Jason, so they avoiding the dreaded skunk. That, uh, that can happen in a four-round match where you end up losing 8-0. That never feels good. So even to get a point helps things feel better. As we see the highlights, uh, and yet another highlight from Mr. Beerling nice. as he does a takeout with a bit of a flipper. Ron with that heavy, heavy, heavy follow-through 20. Just a fantastic shot, fantastic angle. Hope you've enjoyed this. We'll be back with more as we have more uh, competitors. Duke it out here in the Tracy Boards recruiting, recording studio. Make it a great day.